Hi guys, Tech here, and I wanted to kind of do a end of league like review synopsis as well as nerfs I'm expecting to this build in particular. This is the Absolution Summon Skeletons build. And so we have a plus three helm with hypothermia in it. Nothing crazy. Um, and then we have Flesh Crafter. The biggest thing I'm going to just say right off the bat is Flesh Crafter, I'm guessing, is going to get a nerf or a massive change. Now, what I'm expecting the nerf to be is instead of ignores, because ignores is a very powerful mechanic, especially when coupled with minions who you don't have to worry about exposure with in any way, shape or form. Uh, with having ignores, I'm expecting that to be changed over and get off of ignores and go into a flat percent. Now, I would like it to be like 40%. It may not be that high. It may be higher. I don't know. I don't. I'm not a decision maker. But if I was, I would probably say that you're like the sweet spot is probably about 40% where it's still good enough to use, but it's not so overpowered. And then you have to figure out a way of inflicting exposure, which is fine. Oh, we got a big guy that's cool um as you can see like really even though this is like my absolution build the main thing i'm casting is the summon skeletons absolution while it is good it it just cannot compete with the clear speed of summon skeletons especially on a five link without like plus three or anything like that. Like the clear speed you receive from these guys is absolutely insane. And you can just really, you can play this way safer than I do. Like I play this kind of aggressively and that's probably why I'm gonna go more melee next league. But as you can see, the Absolution still does its job. Like, it does a lot of boss damage. It's just, you don't have to use it very often while going through the level, like, while going through basic leveling and dealing with, um, you know, the, the normal mapping stuff. You just don't need it that much. But as you can see, it still works. It still does its job, and it rapidly shreds bosses like that's significantly faster than when I leave these guys to their own device and these like this boss specifically I like to try to isolate them out one at a time it doesn't always work Oof. All right, so there's that. But it's like just volley, this is just volley. This isn't GMP, this isn't greater volley. This isn't, it's just volley, not LMP plus volley, just volley. So we're only getting three projectiles. I am running a second green gym for Pierce because Pierce is absurd. Nice, thank you. And what I would say, like, there's two things I think should change about Summon Skeletons. One, I think Flesh Crafter is just too powerful. Like, it's just blatantly too powerful. And I feel like they need to nerf Flesh Crafter. And I'm kind of glad this leak happened because it's going to get Flesh Crafter nerfed, I'm pretty sure. 
The other thing I would say is it's all about how they nerf it to make it where it's still worth its rarity drop rate. So I think the answer is you just give it like somewhere between 40 and 60% pin instead of ignores, I think is the answer. Now, some people won't like that solution because with exposure and with other things, you can actually get them to do more damage. It's like the Inquisitor argument, right? The difference between having to apply additional effects to lower and it already being fully lowered or, or at zero is massive because this build is already socket starved. So what you're doing is you're making it where. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm going to have to dedicate another socket or two. I don't have another socket or two to really give up without impacting my damage significantly. Because when you're talking about another socket or two, it's like, OK, what do I lose to be able to reliably inflict exposure or do I just make it where I don't reliably inflict exposure and instead I just do X amount less damage, which is a solution. Don't get me wrong, but what it does is it makes it where there's at least like if you want to do the same DPS totals, there's going to be, you know, a little more work involved, which is perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine to have there to be a little bit more work involved. And I think that's like a happy medium where you don't kill the item, even though it's significantly worse. It still has a draw to it. Because like, let's dive into this for a second. Minions have faster energy shield recharge. So that's whatever. They uh, convert some of their life to maximum energy shield. While they have it, their hits ignore monster elemental resistances. What makes that so good with summon skeletons is they start with energy shield and they probably are going to die or you're going to resummon them before they're out of that energy shield. So it's it's just a natural like self-fulfilling prophecy that it just is going to always work very, very well with them with absolution. It's not as big of a deal. It's not as big of a deal, but it's not to say that that's nothing for absolution minions either, because they also get resummoned consistently. Um, so it really like with this style of a build, flesh crafter is insanely powerful. Is that going to change next leak? I can almost guarantee you that it will. I can almost guarantee you that it is going to be significantly impacted next leak. Whether that means that this build is no longer playable or not is all dependent on how they do the nerfs. So if they nerf it to a percentage, the build's still fine. It's in a good place. If they don't nerf it to a percentage and instead change the elemental resistance, it will be good. It just won't be the boss killer clear speed God that it is now, which isn't to say that it's awful. It's just to say that it's significantly worse than what it is now. And that may be fine. That may not be fine. Time will basically tell. I'm hoping that on Friday when the uh, league is announced, we get our data so we can get a quick path of building update. There's no real major skill tree changes, maybe a couple of minor ones where we can get a quick path to building turnaround and we can start getting videos out uh, over the weekend, which would be phenomenal um, because the league starts on the 13th. The other thing that I think will happen is I think the amulets are getting nerfed. I would guess they are going to nerf on this one, the quality 
I think they're going to nerf that percentage down. I think everything else is fine. So I think the reservation is fine. I think the all skill gem levels is fine. I think the experience gain is fine. I do see them nerfing the quality probably down from 20 to 30 to I would say like 5 to 15 in that era because it makes too many divergent and like all the like the anomalous and all that kind of stuff. It makes some of that just way too strong uh, with getting those huge buffs. So I'm guessing they're going to nerf this. As far as everything else, the only other like I see these two items being nerfed. I don't think it will make the build unplayable. You don't have to use this necklace. It was just a very good cost for damage necklace investment. Like it was just a good investment. The other thing I think will happen is I think the additional. I don't think I have one on this build. I think I have it on the other build. I think the the matching to get a passive point, I think is going to get changed in some way. I don't know if they're going to make it more rare. I hope not, but they may make some of them more rare, especially the valuable ones, or they may leave it all at like a zero table and it's just kind of pure random, which is fine. But I do see them making certain ones of these significantly more rare. Like I want to say Mistress of Sacrifice and Commander of Darkness were both very, very expensive, as well as Unnatural Strength uh, for Necromancer specifically. I didn't look too much into jewels just because it was hard for me to fill out what I had planned in Passive Tree already. As far as build changes, there's nothing that's significant that I would change about the build. Like as I have it planned out right here. Now, there's definitely more ways of playing it. But there's nothing that I would significantly like. I think this is a very good place. I think this is a very affordable place for the build to be at. I mean, this helmet's nothing special. These gloves, even though the lightning damage leeches life is really nice, it's nothing special. The wand is nothing really all that special either. Corpse Walker boots, Aegis Aurora, the rings, nothing crazy. I don't even have like a curse or a mark or anything. Um, the jewels are pretty good, but I got them very early on and I got a very good price on those. And that's the thing about jewels, like if you get like if you have. If you're flexible with jewels. And you have like a couple of things you're looking for, you can get really good jewels really cheaply. If you aren't flexible with jewels, you need to pre map out exactly what modifiers you're looking for and search them early and often. That way you can get really good deals. As far as where I ended up. And this is without flash buffs or anything like that. 65% physical damage, uh, basically no evasion, about 2k energy shield. We're capped on everything except for cold where we're five over. We do have positive lightning resistance. We have max block when um, the bone offering is consumed. So when Bone Offering is consumed, we have max block, almost max spell block. I think I'm one away from max spell block, which is this guy right here. Yeah, one away from max spell block, which is whatever. Right. It's it's not the end of the world. One point. It's overall a really good build. I'm very, very happy with it. It's one of my better builds. I do think it's getting nerfed. Another thing I do want to mention is I would really like it if if they're going to make changes to summon skeletons, one of the biggest changes would make their projectiles match their skin. Because that's so annoying when you're going and casting 
skeletons in particular, like it causes performance issues and it clutters the screen for absolutely zero reason. Absolutely zero reason to do that. Um, the other thing, what is it that? Uh, I didn't go ham on this link as much as I thought I was going to at first. I kind of petered out fairly quickly. I think a lot of that is just due to the type of build this is. It's like I made it active, but it wasn't. It wasn't meaningfully engaging enough where I was either a super fast or b super responsive. And I think I'm probably going to switch over to melee this league. We'll have to see. I really enjoyed playing the dual strike character, even though I got like destroyed um, in that league due to me being greedy and trying to fight Bamith and the uh, shock and all boss at the same time. Not a good idea, uh, especially because I think the shock and all boss was possessed. Like I should have been in the map, but I did it. And uh, I think I made it to like level 76 before I went crazy. I definitely enjoy standard more because I feel like I push it a lot harder in standard than I do in hardcore. I, I think naturally I play it way too safe in hardcore and it's just not as fun compared to standard. But it's nice to like that was my first time going through the 10 X system on hardcore and, and not in a specialized league, right, where I'm like going this this far and then it's fine. And so with that, I, I'm pretty happy. I hope this information is helpful and I will catch you guys on the next one. Have a great day, Exiles.